It's Jamie here on with the uh, Enigmatic Nomadics YouTube channel. We're here at the Van Build Fest. We've just got a few days left. As we've been going around visiting with people, one of the families we met was Travis and Stephanie and their family here. And so we decided to take a few moments and visit with them and let you get to meet them. We don't meet a lot of families on the road, and these folks are in a schoolie. And very interesting story. First thing I want to know is, what happened? How did you go from wherever you were, tell me where that was, yeah. to you're in a school bus, you're building it out, you've decided to you know, bring your kids out into this life. Walk me through that. Yeah, so we were in a traditional house. <laughs> And uh, we owned our house and we spent two and a half years flipping the house. We thought by flipping the house, we'd actually create freedom for ourselves. But instead we gave up all of our family vacations. We gave up all of our time together. We gave up all of our monetary resources to put into this thing. And when we sold it, the big decision was, do we sell this and do it all over again and give up even more living. Do we flip it and reinvest our money? That way we can, you know, have some sort of retirement or do we just travel and hit the road and find another piece of land that we can homestead on, which is something that we tried to do in the past. And we traveled for four months looking for the land. And then after being on the road, we looked around and decided like, this is, this is great. Why, why try again when you can just keep traveling? So. And I think a big part of that, when we originally, we sold the house and we were going to go look and I was going to actually create a retreat center. I was going to create a retreat center, create an intentional community, create space for the kids to be there for them, present for them. And when we started traveling, we actually realized that there was more community on the road than we could have ever imagined. Yeah. I know that when I started living this way eight years ago, there wasn't much content on the web it doesn't matter if we're talking about facebook reddit youtube no nobody was really doing this right so what gave you guys the idea to even consider this were you looking at well channels you, on youtube youtube, <clears throat> YouTube. similar because it was about eight years ago that we sold everything we owned and moved out to the middle of the desert to homestead it didn't necessarily work out we had no idea of traveling we had to go back to end up uh, reinvesting and flipping the house and sort of thing. there wasn't any resources but there was no content you know? <laughs> that we could find there was no nothing to follow and then when we fell back into like okay we're about to homestead again we started doing our research and gathering information so we knew where we were going and uh that's when we found i found uh the rtr and i found some of these other nomads i remember seeing uh seven yep. on mm -hmm. youtube before i you know this is the first time i met him here and uh, a few other traveling people, and I'd follow them and check out what they're doing. And we went to, because of YouTube, we went to the RTR. And because of the RTR, we found out about Schoolie Palooza. And then we started, you know, meeting people that told us about these events. And, and then, because uh, of Schoolie Palooza and the RTR, we met Sev, we met Sev who Sev, told us about you. Told us about and he's band. like, it has to be on your list, yeah. hands down. And we were like, okay, yeah, sure. Here, we've been blown away. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> we've gone to, a, we've, we purposely go out of our way to attend as many of these events that we can. We do music festivals, uh, all sorts of gatherings, we any sort of event fairs, that somebody tells us about. Mountain we, Man we Rendezvous. I mean, we do yeah. not just nomadic events. We do events across the gamut with people that are traveling full-time or not. I mean, we've gone to festivals like uh, Lightning in a Bottle, and we went all the way to Delaware. So those are big music festivals. There's not much community in them, but there you can see a whole new generation of people that are coming together in a sense. Um, and then you have something like Schoolie Palooza, where everybody kind of gets together. And I think some of those people are there to more like show off what they're doing rather than, um, you know, as far as being nomadic. But there's still a community. But when you come here... Uh, it was totally unexpected that all these volunteers would be going out of their way to help people that can't help themselves. Yeah, so I designed these uh, brackets that require steel, and I heard there was welding, so I went into town and bought all the steel and had it pre-cut and everything. That way, all you have to do is, you know, weld it together. But being over there and working with them, I found myself volunteering, and why he was helping me work on my stuff, I was helping him work on other people's stuff, and now... Ever since then, I keep every day I go over there and volunteer and 
it's really neat to see these people giving and giving and giving. And I sit down and talk with them and I ask Steve, like, what brought you here? Uh, why are you doing this for other people? And his reply was, well, I've, when I first wanted to hit the road, uh, this is the first place I came to. And this is, you know, a part of him now and he wants to be a part of it. So it's great. He's a cool guy, him and Alan over there. And, yeah. you know, he pulled me aside and he said, if you can get Travis to come back next year, <laughs> get Travis to come back next year. I'll be here. Yeah. So that's awesome. You, I'm in my mind, I'm trying to piece this together. You started a homestead. Maybe you were looking up. I'm trying to key in on this. Maybe you looked up off grid could have been yep. one of the things yep. where off grid's homesteading and off grid yep. is a traveling lifestyle. Yep. You started learning that this was actually something that could be, uh, had to make the decision on what kind of vehicle you would get. Um, I was a handyman for about 20 years. So I've done just about everything except for welding. That's why I'm, that interests me over there. But, uh, seeing people with schoolies, um, there's a guy named Wes, and since you walk into his bus, it's custom, it's built out. And I go, oh, shit, I can do this. I can do this, but I can do it my way. And that was like, I'm in. We started traveling, though, in 23 feet. So we had a 23-foot toy hauler with all four of us in it. So we didn't have any toys. <laughs> we had kids' toys. We had Legos. <laughs> right. But that got you guys in the game. That got us yeah. in the game. And we originally yeah. went for a toy hauler because it was a perfect homesteading transitional house. It had 100 gallons of water. It had a built-in generator and a 30-gallon gas tank. We could mm -hmm. build yeah. a homestead with this toy hauler. Right. But it got us traveling because we went, we don't want to live in Southern California. So where are we going to live? I convinced Travis that we would take a year and go to every state in the country I, I was like we're gonna hit all yeah. 50 states and he went that's impossible we're not doing that and i'm like oh yes we are so we, <laughs> we hit the ground running we <laughs> traveled across the states quick we were going through a state in less than a week Just boom 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 and it wasn't so much that you didn't it wasn't really like sightseeing it was like oh let's go see this and now we got to move because we got to try to keep up with that traveling the 50 states <laughs> finally we made it back to illinois where my brother's at okay that's enough <laughs> We're not traveling like this anymore. We, we have a good idea of what's out there. Yes. I think we're good. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's slow down a minute and figure yeah. out what's going on. And then that unravels into um, staying full time on the road, you know, after living in, in a house and trying to homestead. Uh, being on the road is, I can't imagine a better lifestyle, really. Talking about being on the road, you've got your family, you've got to have access to resources mm -hmm. be able to resupply mm -hmm. how do you find places what are you looking for when you decide this is the next place we're going to go what led us across most of the united states and the directions that we went into was uh people mm -hmm. we'd get to a place and it always happened we get to a place talk to the people those people tell us to go here we went there we went there made it to that place talk to new people new people tell us to go here and these are like people that we made friends with along the way and everywhere we go and it was like do you want to go to an event where people would call us and like hey there's an event over here we'd pick up and go we get invited really we, like we when invited we get to invited places, and places we take we, we say know, yes yeah. you know as much as we can on in this lifestyle a lot of folks might be watching this it's apparent that you're not of uh retirement age you're probably not pulling a pension or you have a trust fund you guys are living on Rich uncle. It's a day-to-day. -day, okay. Know, week to week, month to month. So you started out, I don't, you know, I didn't need to know all your finances and stuff, but you, you had the homestead and then you moved from that into a school bus. You've now built out the school bus that, mm -hmm. you know, had resources that you had to come up with to do that. So selling our home though, we actually became debt free, which was okay. huge. So we sold our home and we were able to get debt free, which a lot of people, that's, that's a constant for them. That was our biggest priority, was selling our house, paying off all of our debt. And for us, that's how we were able to actually even think about having this be a, a lifestyle. But within nine months being on the road, not knowing how to be nomadic, we spent everything we, we had. Yes, we did. So well, we had to figure it was going to be a foregone conclusion. And now you know, yeah. and there's yeah. more stuff to know. Yeah, yeah. 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 So you learn that's along okay. the way. Yeah, I do healing. Um, I had a virtual business already before we left to become nomadic on the road. So I do uh, 
virtual sessions with people. I have healing groups. Um, we actually rock hound and find crystals, and I do crystal healing, and uh, I collect wild crafted plants, and I make tinctures out of them, and we go to a lot of thrift stores. Yeah, I, I do. Uh, I buy and sell stuff, and I will take those items and clean them up and sell them on eBay for a profit, and that's how we pay for a good half of what we do yeah. so we both kind of bring in half of the income that gets us by each month right? Travis, i wanted to ask you specifically i'm imagining that since you say you were a handyman you did most of the work here i've done everything did in the you bus. did you film any of it and put it on youtube or anything i did but i was so caught up in the moment of filming a lot of the stuff some of it's really choppy um but i got the floors out put the new floors in fixed all the rust and everything took the seats out i did a really quick video of that uh, it was a time constraint sort of thing. And then it was the same thing when I did the seats was the next time I had the build. Uh, I only had two times to build so far. Uh, first was the floors, then we got on the road because we had to make it to Yellowstone. The second one was the seats, the beds, uh, the composting toilet. And I think that was the, yeah, that was the second build. And that's all I've done so far. Oh, and the shelves. So the next build, I'll be building a kitchen. And I've, there's so much to do on the bus. But yes, I, I did make a recordings of it. Um, you can find them on our channel. Homeschoolie. What is it? Homeschoolie. Home? I, I just, S K O O L I E? Yep. Yeah. Okay. You guys see me do videos on solar installations or battery installations or different how to's. It, I'm not going to say it takes twice as long, but it takes way longer. To make it into something that winds up on YouTube when you also consider the editing and all that stuff, putting in the title, uploading it. I know that I have a lot of projects on my bus that I didn't film just for the fact that I just wanted to get it done. Exactly. And so I can appreciate that. Yep. Stephanie, if somebody was watching this, who would be a good candidate to contact you for the services you provide? Yeah, so anybody who's really ready to change the way that they're thinking about things, change the way that life is going. I work a lot with people who feel very stuck and stagnant in what they're doing and, and how life is going because I we came from that place. We came from a place of living in the house with the kids going crazy, with them fighting and punching and our health was all over the place to now being in a place where we actually have freedom. And so really that's what I love to create for people is not just a mindset of freedom, but of a body physical sensation of really being able to be free and live who you are meant to live. So let's say I feel like I'm stuck and I contact you, what, through a website or something? Mm -hmm. They can reach us through homeschoolie.life. Homeschoolie. I didn't know dot life was even a thing. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so homeschoolie.life. If I called you and I, or contacted you through there and I said, I, I feel like my life is stagnant. I, I don't know what's going on. What would be a, a, a uh, an example of a remedy that you would offer? Yeah, so plant remedies are a go-to for me right now. And um, I love plant remedies because they actually get into a real physical realignment with us. We are so lacking nature. We're so lacking connection with, with plants and the earth that a plant remedy will instantly start recalibrating our system, get us back into tune with who and what, and maybe even like... I think a lot of stagnation and stuckness in our thinking and in our in our lives is this lack of connection with what we even are living for. And finding that life purpose, finding a vision, finding a way to get out and serve, which is what the van build really does, like getting people outside of themselves and their stuff to get into a bigger picture, to get out and actually serve and be a part and live on purpose. So you would give me a consultation and send me some tinctures in the mail? Mm -hmm. You just send me some stuff in the mail or yeah. give me a recipe book to go get this stuff? Yeah, so I would actually make a custom blend for an individual. And then if they'd like to go further and actually start learning new coping skills, I have healing programs that I've created. I have three month programs, I have six month programs, I have personal programs. So depending on their uh, how extensive, they want if they just want to have a tincture and just want to be able to take something simply in their own lives and maybe they read a lot of books and do a lot of personal growth on their own 
Um, otherwise, if they really want a hand holding, I do I do individualized healing work with the individuals to go deep, heal a lot of traumas. I do a lot of trauma work um, and actually help create new foundations for people so that they can start living the life that they were really meant to live. Do you have testimonials on your website? I will get them. I have them on my Facebook. All right, here's, <laughs> a, here's a testimonial. <laughs> she brought me some tinctures and said, this will fix a hangover, this will help you sleep, and this will help get rid of negative energy, and it all worked. <laughs> so, so that's one. That's the first one. She got that Thanks, one for Jamie. you. Let's just wrap it up with this. Yeah. How do the kids learn? You're doing homeschooling. Yeah, and then yeah. what's next for you guys as a family as far out as you can see? Okay. So the, the bus's name is Curriculum. And homeschooling to us is not about a workbook, even though, you know, we do workbooks sometimes. Homeschooling for us is really about learning. In community, the, the In kids community. learn from the people that we're engaged with and the places that we go and all the, the new trees that we're surrounded by or shrubs or bushes and rocks. And we're always invested in learning ourselves. Yeah. But uh, So it's a constant. We're all learning together on the road. Yeah, you can't but, uh, help. You can't help but learn in this lifestyle. I mean, we get out. The kids know over 130 different plants, how to use them, if they're medicine, if they're food. They know the animals of the area. They know the geology. They know the rocks, the minerals. Mm -hmm. So while we're not necessarily doing a workbook, you know, they're well, playing. We're still doing a workbook. But they're I mean, they're learning, playing Farkle. Reading, writing, and arithmetic. We're playing we're Farkle, and they're like doing that, math, but... and he's going, "Oh, I just got three hundred and fifty points." Yeah, we're you doing. You know, it's, okay. it's constant. So we do a lot of practical learning. When they're reading, they're reading because it's like, "Hey, what we're going to learn about this," and so they want to read. So they're reading. They want to mm -hmm. learn how to. They want to learn. Kids want naturally. to learn naturally. Yeah. So, you know, it's not a struggle to go through our reading material and to learn how to read because they're excited. Because they want to, they want to grow deeper. They want this information. Well, plus you can customize it. You know your kids better than any teacher would, and you can customize what they're going to read that day to what their interests are in that moment instead of what was on the curriculum at the schoolhouse. Right, right. right. And you also <clears throat> support their interests in whatever it is they're interested in, and that's the beauty of it. Because they're with us um, and not in a school, whatever interests they have, we pursue them. And we purposely and drive and go out so of our So Zion's way. been interested in horses, and so we drove through Wyoming looking for wild horses, and we, you know, go out of our way to get to these places. And it just so happens that because of that same thing, we end up meeting people that have horses or, you know, invite us to go to their house. We met somebody that wants us to come out to their house in California and have horses, and they do rodeo and stuff, but it's still cool. Let's go do yeah. it, you know? Do you guys have a bigger vision that you've discussed? Mm -hmm. Are you going with the flow and just kind of enjoying going to a group, seeing what the next thing is, just to check that out, seeing if you like it for the next time or whatever? Or do you have a bigger vision of where you want to be in a few years? Yeah, we, um, we're gonna, <laughs> we've got a pretty big vision. We, yeah. uh, we want to get this bus converted, and um, right now it's in its very infant stage. Uh, I want it to be a work of art that is also our home. Um, and I want it to be inspiring to others. Uh, with the bus, I'll have a water catch system. Um, I'm going to have a whole playground for the kids with the roof deck and a slide and a rock wall up the bus. And the inside's going to very be very comfortable and just artistic with all the copper piping and everything. So that's my goal is to make this bus look uh, amazing, feel comfortable, and have something to show. And maybe I'll get into converting buses or helping people out do their thing. But as far as the future, we're going to, yeah, keep going to these events because that's where we find new friends. That's where we find community. And, uh, and we'll see what happens. We're getting there. we're getting invited to be um, integral parts of different events that we're going to. Mm -hmm. So at, even at Schooly Palooza last year, um, because of being there and setting up a healing space and just being a part of kind of keeping things going in a, in a way that, uh, people could really feel and be encouraged. They're like, wow, there was a lot of drama that happened, but now it feels so different. And I was in there kind of doing some stuff with that. And um, just being a part of that, we were invited to, hey, can you can you do more of that? Can you create more space for activities? Can you mm -hmm. create more space for this community thing that you did? I don't know what you did, but you did something and you shifted. Well, I can vouch for the fact that just coming in here, there's a calm, positive energy mm -hmm. that you step into. And it's very apparent and present. So whatever you're doing, it's, it's, you know, you can feel it and it's working. Let's leave it on this. 
if there's somebody watching right now that maybe is, you know, a family and they've got kids and they're thinking about they may want to live the traveling lifestyle. They don't, they aren't sure if they're going to get a school bus. They're not as handy as Travis is to build it out. Yeah. Uh, they're not sure what they're going to do with their kids or how they're going to raise them or where they're going to camp or where they're going to stay. What advice would you give them? Trust. Mm. So trust. one thing I realize is you, you trust the source. You're always being taken care of. Always. There's always somebody looking out for you. Always. And that becomes more apparent when you in in the nomadic sort of movement because when you don't have much, you always seem to get what you need, you know, and then you can just kind of shoot for bigger things. And I mean, we put a lot into what we're doing, obviously a little more than we really have to, but I would have to say, yeah, you just trust the source, trust yourself, trust your instincts. And that'll, that'll take you all the way through life. Believe I, it. I would have to say living this lifestyle is not more difficult than trying to make it in a house. You still have to make money. You still have to raise your kids. Except for now, now you're not stuck in the same place with the same neighbor, with the same people, with the same drive. And it's less overhead. And it's less overhead. Which less overhead means you're not spending as much time doing things that you don't want to do so you can pay for something that you really don't even want in the first place That's half the time. exactly it. Right. Because well, exactly you don't it. need much, you know. And not a lot of social pressure out here to keep up with the neighbors, is there? I, no only have to, no. I only have to clean 200 square feet. Yeah. That... That's, and you're doing a great job. All you got to do is look at my bus that, as a comparison. You know, uh, there's people, and we came from, you know, a, a 2,000 square foot house, you know, so it's, it's, you're outside more. You're reconnecting more. You're actually pursuing things that you're passionate about more. And so I just do it. Yeah. Figure yeah. out a way to make it happen and just start going on more vacations. Start extending your time together. Yeah, anybody that's inspired to um, live a nomadic lifestyle or just get out from underneath what, what is burdening them, just do it. Don't, just figure it out. Take your time. Plan it out. Get rid of all the stuff you don't need that you can't take with you and go. Mm -hmm. And you will thank yourself for doing it. You have nothing to lose. There's nothing I can really add to that. <laughs> thank you, Travis and Stephanie. Thank you. I hope this was a value to you. I know we're going to see you around camp for the next few days as we wrap things up. Got to get a little group hug. Oh, yeah. All right, let's do it. Woohoo! <laughs> really good meeting you guys. Oh, Thanks for making time for us. No, thank you. This awesome. has been incredible.